Hello! Hey guys! Welcome to Functional Groups Made Easy version 2.0. Uh, if you didn't know, today is actually Orgo Made Easy's five year anniversary, and I thought what better way to celebrate it than redoing my very, very first video, and this time with a mic, and I included ketones for those of you who are looking for it. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, we're gonna go over 16 functional groups, just like in my very first video. Well, one more because we have ketone this time. But yeah, I hope you're ready. So in case you're uh, taking Orgo and you're struggling with remembering like the difference between an ether or an aster or an amine or a mid, and you're like, it's so confusing and that they're basically, they look exactly the same. Well, this video is gonna help you break them up and differentiate them. So first off, without further ado, our first three functional groups that we're gonna talk about are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Now what are they? Well, they are pretty simple actually. We'll start off with the alkane. Alkanes are pretty much just the carbon, single bonded to another carbon, with, uh, and the other carbons have four different groups coming off of them. Alkenes are pretty similar, but this time the carbons are double bonded to each other, and there's two, the carbons still have four bonds coming off of them. And lastly, alkynes have, can you guess it? Triple bonds between them and then there's only uh, one group coming off, but the carbons still have four bonds at all times, all right? And this can also be shown in bond line form, which you'll see a lot, and I prefer, actually. This is bond line form, when you don't have to draw hydrogens, and you just draw the carbon, well, I guess you don't even draw the carbons, they're just implied by the corners. So, um, let's see, I'll just, th this is not the same alkene as this one, I'm just leaving out. Uh, there's actually hydrogens here, but just to keep things simple, that's the uh, alkene. And then here we have another alkyne, but this time when you draw in bond line form, you leave the carbons out, you have to make sure that your bonds are straight at this carbon and this carbon. So I've had another carbon coming off here, then I can bend it. But at these four carbons, they have to be straight. It has to do with the geometry of alkynes or triple bonds. All right, so that's alkenes, al alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. How do you know the difference? How do you remember them? Well, think about the main difference in their names. It's really just right here, this letter, A, E, and Y. A, E, Y, the way I think about it is, well, A comes first in the alphabet, E comes second, and Y comes last. And it's a single, double, triple bond. So A, E, Y, like one, two, three, one, two, three, single, double, triple bond, okay? Hope that helps. Next, we're gonna be moving on to alcohols. So an alcohol is what? Okay, an alcohol is pretty much just, uh, yes, you drink it, but it's a carbon attached to a OH, all right? And it has to be carbon attached to OH, and another way of showing this, alcohol is like this, bond line form, without joining the carbons or the hydrogens, that's an alcohol, okay? So you kind of just have to remember that, but most people do. Um, and alcohols can be classified in many different ways. They can be called primary, secondary, or tertiary. And how you determine that is you look at the number of carbons that's attached to the carbon attached to the OH. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but remember, it's the number of carbons attached to the, oh, good catch, attached to the carbon attached to the OH. So this carbon only has one, so that's why it's primary. This carbon will have two carbons attached to it, and that's why it's gonna be secondary. All right, and then tertiary, well, let's draw the same basic subunit for alcohols, but this time I'm gonna toss in three carbons, one, two, three, all attached to that carbon. So this is a tertiary alcohol, secondary alcohol, pr primary alcohol. And I realize I skipped something, but alkenes can be classified different ways as well. You can have a Unsubstituted alkene, uh, I'll show you later. Monosubstituted alkene, disubstituted alkene, trisubstituted alkene, and tetrasubstituted alkene. 
Uh, we're running out of space, so I'm gonna put it, I'll just put it over here. Okay, so this is a unsubstituted alkene. Just hydrogens. No carbons coming off the four corners of the alkene. A monosubstituted alkene would be like this. There's hydrogens here, but I'm gonna leave them out just to keep just to save time. Disubstituted alkene can be like this, or you can have this group over here. It would still be called a disubstituted alkene because the alkene has two carbons coming off of it. Okay. Trisubstituted alkene has this, this, and this. Now this light can be here, this light can be here. As long as there's three carbons coming off the alkene carbons, then you're good. And then tetrasubstituted alkene will look like this. Okay? So un, mono, di, tri, tetra. Okay, great. So we did al alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols. Next is uh, our good old friend, ethers. Ethers is one of my favorites because it's a really uh, easy to remember what ether is because it's in the name of it already. An ether is an oxygen with carbons on either sides. Boom, boom. Right? I'm going to draw it in bond line form as well. It's a oxygen once again with carbons on either sides. So, boom, boom, that's an ether. All right, next we jump to amines. Uh, uh, uh. What is a amine, right? Well, a amine, do you have any guesses? Is a nitrogen. It's kind of, an amine is actually pretty similar to alcohol. So I'll draw it in the same way. It is, I'll just draw this one, CH3 attached to a nitrogen, like that. And then the nitrogen can be attached to a, cer a certain number of H's. But know that nitrogen for amines will typically always have just three bonds, and that's always when it's neutral, a nitrogen. Okay, unlike oxygen, which is neutral when it has two bonds, nitrogen is neutral when it has three bonds. So yeah, that's an amine. And the way I remember it is, I think of a, um, in biology, amino acids. Amino acids are the most simple, basic building blocks for proteins. So amines are just super duper simple. They're just a nitrogen attached to a carbon and attached to hydrogens. And sometimes they're not even attached to hydrogens because these can be replaced with carbon chains, which I will show you in a second. So let me just redraw this one more time in bond line form. Um, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And H2. Okay, that's an amine. And amines can be classified just like alcohols, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary. And let's see, what would a primary amine look like? Well, we have it right here actually. A primary amine would just be one carbon attached to the nitrogen. Oh, then the difference between classifying alcohols and amines is that for alcohols, you look at the number of carbons attached to the carbon attached to the OH. For the means, you just look at the number of carbons attached to the end. That's it. Okay, so here we go. Boom, uh, boom, two carbons attached to our nitrogen. And because there's two carbons attached to nitrogen, we only need one hydrogen this time. Boom, okay. And then for the tertiary, boom. We're gonna draw one, two, three. Three carbons and our nitrogen. And this is a tertiary amine, okay? So it's a little different from alcohols, keep that in mind. Next, okay, now we got to the fun part actually. All right, so here we go, just to recap. These are some of our more basic functional groups that you'll see in orgo. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohol, ethers, and amines. Now, I think of the more advanced functional groups a little bit differently now, so I'm gonna be teaching a little bit different than my part one video, or version one. So if you want to see that way of thinking about it, feel free to hop over to that video. I'll link it right here in the cards. But I now think of upgrading these basic functional groups with something called a carbonyl, and that's how I remember my more complicated functional groups. Okay, so a carbonyl, real quickly, is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. You'll see it a lot, you'll see it all the time in orgo. It is not a functional group though, okay? It's in a lot of functional groups, but it's not a functional group. All right, so. What we're going to do is we're going to take these basic functional groups over here and we're going to transfer them over and we're going to upgrade them all with carbonyls. All right, so I'll first start off with something called the aldehyde. Aldehyde. The key to remembering the aldehyde is 
there is an H over here, and it's gonna be really important because I'm gonna take my alkane, drag it over, uh, like drag it over like this, and then at the very end of the alkane, so over here, I'm just gonna real quickly upgrade it with a carbonyl, just like that, okay? All right, well then, what's over here? There's a missing bond, right? Well, there's a hydrogen here, which I'll draw with purple as well. There you go. So this is an aldehyde. It's just an alkane where you've upgraded it with a carbonyl at the very, very end. And this H here is how I remember aldehyde. There's a hydrogen that's hiding on your uh, structure. Because if I didn't draw this in, you would have just gone this. And there's a hydrogen that's hiding. Or just aldehyde, that's the H, that's the H, that's the functional group. Um, that's just how I remember it. Hopefully that helps you guys. Next, we're gonna do ketones, the functional group that I forgot about in version 1.0. And people keep reminding me, but we're gonna bring this alkane over over here. Now this time, instead of dumping the carbonyl or upgrading the last carbon, we're gonna just upgrade uh, one of these carbons in the center of the chain, or one of these carbons that are not at the end of the chain. We're gonna upgrade that carbon to get this, and this is a ketone, all right? It's a carbonyl with carbons on either sides of the carbonyl carbon. And if you rotate it, um, if you rotate it like this clockwise, then we'll get this structure. And personally, if I block out this leg, this kind of looks like a key, like the key to open up a door for me. So that's kind of also how I remember it as ketone. Key like, ketone like keys, all right? So that's that functional group. And then next, we are moving on to an upgraded alcohol. What do you think that's gonna be called? It's gonna be called carboxylic acid. All right, carboxylic acid. So what do we do? Let's drag our primary alcohol over. Boom, boom. Now, you probably already guessed it, but we're gonna upgrade this carbon right here, the carbon right next to the OH with the carbonyl. And boom. That's, a, that's what a carboxylic acid is, okay? All right, next carboxylic acid, ether. Time to upgrade that guy. So we're gonna bring our ether over, our oxygen with carbons on either sides. And then this time we're just going to upgrade either of these carbons. Uh, I'm gonna choose to upgrade this carbon over here. We're gonna upgrade this carbon with a carbonyl. And then we're just gonna give this carbon another carbon as well. So actually I'll erase that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna draw this one more time actually, just so it looks a little better. Okay, so we have our ether. Uh, I just added an extra carbon and we're gonna upgrade it with a carbonyl. And that's it. This is a, oh, I didn't tell you what it's called. It's called an ester, okay? So not quite an ether anymore. Now it's an ester. Esters are ethers with a carbonyl upgraded onto them. Okay, almost done. Next, last, amines. What are amines gonna be called when they're upgraded? Well, they're gonna be called amides or amides. Or even uh, amides. Okay, what is a amide, amide, or amid? It is a amine, so I need my blue marker. I'll bring my primary amine over. So right here, nitrogen, NH2, and then I'm gonna upgrade it with a carbonyl, like this, boom. Okay, and I'll just give it an extra carbon just to extend the chain. Um, and you do need an extra carbon for amides, just like esters, you need an extra carbon there. Yeah, there we go. Amines get upgraded up to amides, and this is what they are. And amides can have different categories as well. As well, they can be primary, secondary, or tertiary as well. So, if I give an example, so amides will always be at least primary because this nitrogen is what you focus on, and this nitrogen will always have to be bound to at least a carbonyl carbon for it to be amide. So, this is a primary one. A secondary one will just be a nitrogen bonded to two carbons and one hydrogen. So like that. And then a tertiary amide will be 
a nitrogen attached to three carbons. Okay, so that's an amide, and we're done with actually the bulk of our main functional groups that you'll see in orgo. So next we have <sighs> nitriles and nitro groups. What are they? Nitriles, nitro. Let's just use blue. So nitriles and nitro. So nitriles is a carbon that is tri, aka triple bonded to a nitrogen. Okay, carbon, nit carbon, triple bonded to a nitrogen, nitrile. Nitro, on the other hand, is gonna be a little bit different. A nitro is gonna be a, let's see, a carbon. Let's see, a carbon, there's a carbon here. It's connected to a nitrogen and then it's tro, so it's gonna be a triple bond, well, not triple bond, it's gonna have three bonds with oxygen, but it's not gonna be one oxygen though. What it's actually gonna be is this, one oxygen there, one, one oxygen down here, boom, and this oxygen is gonna have a negative charge, and this nitrogen is gonna have a positive charge. And that's always gonna be the case for nitro groups, and they're often written as NO2, so you'll see it sometimes on your structures, okay? So be careful, NO2 looks like it's just neutral and pretty simple, but it's actually pretty complicated. It's actually a positive nitrogen and negative oxygen, so look out for that. Okay, all right, we did all that. Nitriles, nitro, almost done. Last two groups, well not last two groups, but second to last, third to last, whatever you call it, is the thiol and then the thiol sulfides. So, thiol, and then thiol, thiol ether actually, thiol ether or sulfides. Okay, so a thiol, real quickly, is just this, but really similar to alcohol, instead of OH, we're just going to have an SH here, and that's a thiol. And thiols can also be classified as primary, secondary, tertiary, depending on the number of carbons attached to the carbon attached to the S. Okay. That's a thiol. Thiol ethers, on the other hand, are basically ethers, except there's a sulfur, and there's carbons on either sides. Okay, so thiol for the sulfur, ether for just carbons on either sides. Okay, thiol ethers, we're almost done. Last group is the arene. So that's not a, mm, I don't think it's the most important functional group to remember, but arenes are basically a ring. But is it, not, is it any ring? No, it has to be a special ring with alternating double bonds, single bonds, double bonds, single bonds, double bonds, single bonds, okay? And this is actually also known as a benzene. Mm -hmm. You'll see it forever in Orgo. So, yeah, there you go. These are your 16 functional groups, made easy. I hope these tricks help you guys remember it a little better. Um, yeah. And that's Functional Groups Made Easy, version 2.0. Uh, to recap, uh, if you like this video, make sure you, as always, like it down there, guys. I hope you guys continue watching my videos for another five years, hopefully. And um, if you are looking for the Clutch Prep promo code, it is currently orgomadeeasy-hex, like hexane. And if you don't know who Clutch Prep are, they're an awesome resource that you can use while you're studying. And I'll have a video in the cards right here that you can check out if you want more information about them. All right. So thanks for watching, hit subscribe as well if you want to get notified when I make new videos for the next five years. And I'll see you guys in my next video then. Okay, bye. Nitrogen, oh, wow. Wow, this is not even working. Okay, this is Dunzo. Touch to me.